So if there's a, a nasty person around you, you're, you're absorbing their nastiness as well. No, no, I, I just mean, um, I just mean a state of absorption, like, like maybe the way you feel when you're slightly drunk, you know, like there's, you know, with the first glass of wine or something, there's a, a letting go, your ego boundaries seem to be loosened. You, I don't know if it's the same for everybody, but it generally is, isn't it? You feel like you're a wee bit, um, you're kind of a bit more where you are. So it's just absorption into, so if you're having a conversation, absorbed into that, if it's, negative there's still the absorption the absorption is love like it's it's very loving it's so it's even if there's something negative going on it's these the absorption feels really good so it wouldn't necessarily feel bad if someone's giving me shit and i'm gonna say it, it doesn't necessarily get through that i mean some some people are very good at getting through them actually but, but generally you know it feels much more because there's space for that there's like and it's just it's just what it is and it isn't I don't know. It doesn't affect things. Don't affect in the same way. I think they go through me much quicker. So even if there is that difficult person and there is shit, and it, say it does trigger me, it'd be like a minute or two. It wouldn't. It wouldn't linger. It wouldn't. You know. Um, but the absorption is just the you know staring at a tree. You know, kind of merging with that. Like just there's just the tree. There's just. Um, like, like when you fall in love with someone and you just want to sit with them and stare in their eyes, <laughs> stuff like that. There's a kind of absorption there, right? So, best they're your favourite punching bag. Which you guess. <laughs> in which case, you're probably just gaslighting them or something. Going, no, you didn't say that. What I heard was. <laughs> say that um, there is, you know, you're talking about Dawn, but there is no, there's really not you that's there. Um, and you spoke about the, the person in the past that might have been negative towards you or whoever. Oh, there was no one actually there as well. So what, what do you... What do you think this is that's playing out now? So like in this room when we're talking to each other, if you're not really there and supposedly I'm not really here, what, what is this interplay between us? How would you explain that? Well, you're here and not here and I'm here and not here, but the, you know, it's, this isn't who I am, but it's, Dawn is very much here. Like, so we're just having a conversation. It's no different than what you're experiencing. The only difference is it doesn't feel like there's anyone in here and or there's anyone in there. So, but the whole experience is the same. In the way that it's different would be impossible to articulate, really, because it's kind of energetic. You know that sense of location being gone. That's kind of energetic. It's, um, but but on the face of it, everything is exactly the same. Like. Um, it's just on a feeling level, on an energetic level. So you could, I mean, because if you take the stance of just oneness, you would say, well, there's no, there's no one here, there's nothing going on. Because that's true to say as well, from the non-dual, you know, but there is a, whole, a human experience as well. That's why people talk about the relative and the absolute. No, you're not allowed to talk about the answer. <laughs> sorry, sorry. <laughs> because like, yeah, so, you know, on one level, there's nothing happening. Nothing ever happened and nothing ever will. There's just nothing, there's no, this is just appearing and disappearing, mm -hmm. disappearing. You know, it's just, um, but I mean, for me, I would talk about having a conversation. I would talk about having relationships, friendships, things to do, da, da, da. Like it's normal, but it's experienced without an experiencer. So it's just, it goes on. Um, and, continues to grow to expand I mean not the not the awakening not for me I mean some people talk about a deepening and I don't know what they're talking about I mean for me it's not well like the experience of oneness deepens um, psychologically there's there are changes for sure um, but 
in some cases I, I, I wouldn't speak for everyone I think that's very individual you know but one of the biggest freedoms of this apart from like suffering to, to an extent because suffering arises and it falls away arises and falls away which it kind of does anyway but maybe if you're identified with it and it stays for an extended period of time it's much more painful than yeah. it just kind of rising up and yeah. you know um, so I mean that's altered a lot here um, so in a sense that's I don't know kind of the same but Dreaming is another interesting one because um, some dreams can be unconscious, a lot of normal dreams can be. So I don't know whether it's awakening in dreams or not. Some of my lucid dreams I'm aware of being in no location. <laughs> lucid dreams seem to be aware of that dimension much more than in normal dreams. I'm not saying it's not there in normal dreams, but um, it seems to be there in lucid dreams. They're quite interesting, but... Um, This, this state or realization that you have, do you see this as something that um, those that are on a certain path should aspire towards? Is this something that is you know, a positive thing that one should try to attain somehow? Or? I think a lot, I mean, the spiritual, I don't know, in some, in some ways, I don't really want to say anything negative about that. It could be very interesting and fascinating and, um, you know, with the psychological, you know, that can be interest. It's just, um, there's a lot of, you can buy into a lot of crap as well, like without realizing it if you're on a path because when this is seen, it's so simple and there's not a lot to say about it. And like for me, cause I'm a psychotherapist, I, I don't go spouting non-duality stuff in my sessions, do you know, like I don't, um, unless somebody asks me something, but I, I don't see that as relevant to the psychological set, unless somebody's had an awakening and they're bringing that and how that's affected them, or they are awake, that's different, but, um, so a lot of people are just, I mean, the, the beauty of this is the, the loss of the sense of authority, so, because if you're a seeker, you're projecting onto the other, and you can't see them anymore, like 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 when you're in love with somebody, you can't see them, right? You know, they're perfect in your eyes, like, it's similar with the, the teacher, someone at the front, you know, and, and your judgment is just totally out, like, I mean, there's the belief that if they undermine you, well, they're doing it for your own good, they're helping you with your ego, getting rid of whatever, like, everything is twisted into this as if they are the ideal parent and as if they're doing things for your own good. So getting rid of all that is, is really good because you realize you can't really think for yourself. I mean, some people seem to be able to, to some extent, so they may be really in touch with their authentic selves. I don't know, but if you can't trust that sense of authority, you're like imprisoned by the other, you're in prison and you can be imprisoned by the most banal ideas and you'll see them as extraordinary. Like, I mean, people come out, a lot of spiritual teachers come out with the most banal things and you're like, wow, and like it's just, but you're hearing them without that gooey feeling of love. Like, it's just, oh my God, you know, wow. And it seems so arbitrary, like, so someone ends up being a multi-millionaire because they've got spiritual books out and it's utterly, you know, like, it's just very childlike. Like it's, um, it's all like this, it's like, my God, I mean, what is, what is there in life? Like really, <laughs> it's a great equalizer. This, it just, just is no one's special. If someone's particularly smart, um, even that, you know, like, it, it just, I don't know, I don't know, it's good, it's very freeing, it's just very, it's intriguing, it's really interesting because you don't realise how much, you know, you've been 
trapped really mm -hmm. and these ideas of people <coughs> um, that leaves you kind of alone with that as well because if you were to try to have a serious conversation with somebody who didn't get that they'd probably just think you're fucking nuts or up yourself or something I don't know, anyway so the danger is also yeah you those projections, of course, that's what leads to like spurt abuse of the spiritual teacher or whatever exploitation. It makes well it makes exploitation in general possible, doesn't it? And, but in the normal psychological sense, that's we're vulnerable to exploitation because we're usually in denial or something, or repressing something, or we don't know what equality looks like. There's, there's two kinds of, you know, there's the, the psychological awakening as well, which isn't <laughs> like, isn't this big, you know, shift of perception, but nevertheless, it's a really important shift. Um, without which you probably keep, your life might stay in the same tram lines, which after awakening it's probably a shame if, if unless their tram lines are pretty good because some people you know it can happen out of the blue your life might be all right you might be in a good relationship you might have a job you really like and kids you love and you know nothing changes after awakening you don't care to I mean because it's become more common I think I mean that's probably more the case you know probably a lot of that I'm just conscious I don't want to just talk No, keep, keep going. <laughs> There's nobody yeah, If anybody no, wants to ask, they will. Yeah. They will go up, like... Yeah. My, 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 main, my main question is, um, I can see the fruit, the benefit in this uh, not identifying with the Jungian ego, the dawn, this, you know, seeing there is no actual doer, this uh -huh. sort of person here. Um, when it comes to suffering, when it comes to you know, getting annoyed at someone cutting you off in traffic and then you just realise, you know, you just realise there is no person maybe here getting annoyed, that the suffering rises and falls, as you say. And I, I see a great benefit in that. What I wanted to know is, is there, not a danger, but is there, uh, is there something lost in the joy that you might get out of life, out of being embodied, being located as dawn in certain activities, is there a, is there a joy lost in in not identifying as the dawn? So a few days ago, I I built a blanket fort with for the first time with my three year old nephew. It's the first time I've done right. something complicated with him. He's just and if if I if I'm in a state where I'm you know David is not actually here, you know this is all just arising and falling. Is there something that is there something lost in me, not David, me, my, the uncle of my nephew, really being present and enjoying that relationship as an uncle with a human being with another human being? Is there, is there a disassociation that one can have on the joy side of things? And have you experienced that? And what, what, would, you, what would you say to that? I wouldn't say so, but I, you know, if you get... <clears throat> you know, if your joy springs from the memory of that, maybe you wouldn't be accessing that so much, so you wouldn't be going to that as a safe place or maybe visiting it quite so much, so the joy would be when you're there and you're doing that and you're absorbed by that and that can be infinitely enjoyable for sure, I mean, but it's just, in a sense, it's not, I don't know, then there's the next thing. I mean, it's not quite as cold as that. Like, it's not like 
but but it's not it's not held on to maybe you know like like I said about like adding something to you or like backwards glancing or like it's kind of you're more where you are and you're less where you're not you know like so in a way some of the energy goes out of memory it's not like you can't access that or appreciate the fact that you had that time or whatever but it's not the same you know it's almost like the energy seems to be much more here and now like mm -hmm. so yeah I think I, I think like prior to awakening there'd be like it, it's all suffering and I realize that not like so less desire for excitement and, and less capacity for that and you sort of think well excitement at your equilibrium is all over the place anyway so it seems more like much more pleasure and you know less less extreme so it comes much more you know okay not not the big highs and lows so mm -hmm. quite so much so because you sort of think of excitement I, I used to that be the thing getting the hit getting the hit of like living on the edge I sort, of, I sort of lived on the edge for a while and it'd be just like um, seeking that out, seeking that because it was such a distraction from the sad truth of my life, which was really quite sad. But you know, just yeah, as, as lots of us do, it might be through alcohol, excitement, excitement and alcohol, and whatever, whatever is it, sex, drugs, rock and roll, whatever your thing is. Um, so yeah, a walk in the park. It's, it becomes more equivalent, you know, the walk in the park, the the night out. They're all rich, you know. It's it's much more, um, you know, not all saving it up. And in a sense, it's much more what's happening. But there is there is excitement about doing certain things and whatever, like you know, um, in this sort of subtle way. But I think. Of course, I could be, I have to warn you, I could be talking out my ass. <laughs> this might be just my experience. <laughs> but yeah, there's a lot of generalizations as well, like the non dual experience. I mean, it's quite obvious when it's obvious. And, and initially, there seems to be, for most people, a desire for validation, you know, um, and then a kind of or, or just like, or trying to recognize, like, is, is this what's happened? Or, and then going to one speaker after another, oh, we don't recognize it. It can take a while for it to kind of, to kind of assimilate this, to kind of realize, and then to like, absolutely let that go and not give a flying fuck whether, you know, like it fits into some, um, someone else's idea of how it should be, I think. I think that's probably quite natural, isn't it? You just kind of grow beyond that a wee bit, and because it doesn't seem relevant anymore, it, like it doesn't seem to matter that anyway. Like it's you just live in life, like well, life is living you, but because there's nothing to be sought from that, like there is no seeking, so it becomes irrelevant whether you were well, there's awakening here or not in a way. Like the seeking is gone. Who would care about it? You know, like so it's. The sort of doubt aspect doesn't have any room to, to grow anywhere because who gives who gives a rats you know um, there's no one who has ultimate truth you know there's just you know there's no special knowledge here like it's just seeing beyond the mind it's very very simple and you know so it doesn't need all these spiritual teachers really and obviously but yeah and a lot of, a lot of the spiritual stuff just seems like word salad to me like it really does it's kind of like doesn't make sense um but i have a lot i mean i i think like energetic kundalini experience of that oh, you know can be really really rich and it's very fascinating and it can change you transform you psychologically massively so I'm, I'm not down on that stuff I'm very into that but it's not the same as the non-dual because that's a game changer proper my you're experiencing life differently not not as the person so that's the 
you know, the proper before and after. There's no going back then. There's nothing to go back to. There's nothing to go forward to. It's just gone. Like, that's the change beyond all change. It just, it's change and it's not change because it's always the case. It's always, I mean, everything's already realised. So it's, but at the end of the day, we still don't know what this is. And it's very curious. What do you mean by that? I mean, there's still a lot, like, whether it's multi-dimensional, you know, what happens after death, um, what happens in other realms, like, how does it operate there? Like, who knows how it functions after death, really? Like, oh, I mean, it's just, I mean, having experienced other, experience, having experiences of other dimensions and stuff, brings those kind of questions to me because I sort of think it really is kind of it's very stuck down here it's very um I don't know I don't know it's just bizarre planet earth is really quite strange Intuitions or like your own suspicions of, of what happens after, or this, these other realms that you talk about. Is, is there anything that you you have an intuition about? I don't. I don't have any thoughts of myself uh, of my own really on the matter. Um, I've only got my own experiences, and my last one was very very nice. Um, I think Tim Freak's idea of it being like a shared dream, um, which isn't to, to take away from the reality of it, like it extends afterwards, so it can kind of be anything, which, I mean, there's a lot of similarity in NDE experiences, near-death experiences and stuff, you know, but there's enough differences there as well, I, um, you know, it's very like a lucid dream, my experience of other dimensions as well, like, so, um, you know, you think of something, you want to be somewhere, bang, you're there, so it's like, you can, you know, like a lucid dream, you can recreate your reality in that, like, it just seems much more like that, like, not always, but not at will, like, sometimes it will, and sometimes not, like, um, you're fighting a demon, you'd rather be in a bar having a glass of wine with a friend, pine, whatever, whatever it is, but um, yeah, it feels much more free, as mm -hmm. in, mm -hmm. but then I've had hell experiences as well, I've had nice experiences, I've had very good experiences, and so, I don't know. But it's interesting, not so much Christian ones recently, but they seem to be more <laughs> biblical, like the biblical hell, and you know, the biblical heaven, and, yeah, which is interesting as well. So, I, I yeah, some people, yeah, who knows? Nobody wants to go to the biblical hell or the Buddhist hell or the any hell, really. <laughs> Remember to sing Christmas carols if you do, it seems to get you out. I know two people. Two people who did that actually. Two different people talking about NDEs. Both sang Christmas carols, and that was their. Suddenly, the light came and took them out. It's it's interesting. Like, just remember that. If you... <laughs> it's remembering it. That's the problem, isn't it? Because... <laughs> you mentioned uh, Tim Freak earlier. Uh -huh. um, what do you make of his? These the past few years, he's been speaking of the uh, framing of non-duality from a neo inviter standpoint and his critique of that, the dangers around that. Um, what, what do you make of, uh, what do you make of his, so his, his general um, criticism is the framing of neo inviter 
non-duality expressed by Neo is there is this, there is a loss when one doesn't talk about the tin freak that is experiencing these things, especially when it comes to relationships, one can start to become disassociated from relationships and people around them. But what do you, what do you make of what he's talking about? Yeah, I mean, yeah, I mean, I get that. I mean, of course, <coughs> if you, you know, and some, some of the, in the radical stuff, some of it is, so there's no experience and there's no relationship, which is true in a sense. And, and to be honest, I'm okay with people saying that. Like, I think everybody should be able to express this however the hell they want. And I'm really not for rules and regulations around so I hate that. Um, so I don't care um, in that sense. It's just the danger, like some people get stuck in that and they, they can't help become contaminated with it and they absorb it like a, like some sort of psychological truth and they start acting that out in life like well this isn't important I shouldn't be having a relationship or or, or even after awakening you can become contaminated by it like um, and it does miss the point of I mean all you've got is this life in a, in a true sense awake or not all you've got is this life right and you're either gonna, gonna sit around at someone's feet and, and listen to them spout non-dual crap <laughs> or you're gonna do something with your life like me live it you know you know if you're free from this and just um so it can i think it can get people feeling very stuck i mean it needs to be said of course i mean but it, i think it's all reaction i mean that stuff i think like the first radical stuff came almost like as a reaction to too much therapeutic stuff like in the sort of 60s and then suddenly there's this like clear you know nothing to be done it's here already there is no one very clean everybody's like well we can relax we don't have to listen to all this kind of psychological bullshit we don't have to do meditations right. we can just go along and we go out for a drink afterwards and have a laugh and a chat and mm -hmm. that was kind of a freedom in itself and then but obviously then it becomes one-sided again i think it's just the way, it, the way it is, I mean, um, yeah, the, the human being can get lost in this. I think it can, it doesn't get talked about because anyone says they're awake. Behind the scenes, they're living a life and they'll have their ups and downs, you know, and, you know, like, and you don't see that. I mean, I have seen that. I've, um, I've seen myself. I know how I am. I know how other people who are awake are. And I... It's very, very human. It's very, very normal. What goes on, it's no different. So, and and things are important. Some things more so, and something you know, like and if you're going through a breakup, a marriage breakup, it can rip you apart. Like yeah. you know, like so, just saying there's no one and there's not, you know, it can make it sound like oh well, you know, life's a breeze then, and then, then shit hits you and like it's it's not like um, necessarily. I think things. You know, if there's a there's a ten, it tends to I think it minimizes everything so people start to see well if the past isn't real therefore my experiences aren't real therefore you minimize what happened to you or you know my the crap beat night me as a kid <laughs> yeah, <laughs> who cares yeah, um, yeah. so you, and you've probably been minimized your whole life so you probably actually are drawn to that story like so um, so it's just, so you're really stuck and frozen psychologically. You're probably in a free state. You're probably having even worse relationships than you had before you went along to launch quality meetings. You're probably, friends probably hate you. And I don't know. Yeah. And it seems like it's equally problematic to become identified with non-duality ideas than it was originally to be identified with the, the personality. You know, it's, it's the same same level of problem because the whole problem of being identified with the personality in the, in the first place was was that it seemed to be that you were that exclusively, and now if you if you if you take on the non non duality ideas to the point where you exclusively you know define yourself as oh, I live from this place and disassociate with that, then that's just the same thing flipped on his head. It was almost like having the ultimate tyrannical father mother kind of you know like. You know, it's like, it could be, yeah, it's like, not, nothing matters, but, but, and it's not like a part of you can fight against that, it's like, 
fuck, my, my whole self, everything, it's not true. It's like the ultimate brainwashing fucking... And you can't live that. You can't live that in a healthy way. You know, it's like... At least the, the identity, there was a struggle, there was something, but the personality, it's... No, it's not good. <laughs> it's just that... Ten but it's innocent. It's funny, that innocence, because it's a pure, clear message, and it's true from... I mean, it's ultimately true in a way. It, well, ultimately, it is true, but it, you can't rule out the individual, can you? You can't. You can't rule out this. But what's machine. missing in both cases is the and. Yeah. It's the and, right? But that's, then, that's relative vitally and... important. Anything that's kind of taken to be an absolute or, or identified with as an absolute is you just that's kind of yeah. Yeah, it's. It's almost like any ideology or something. Like it, it's yeah. You need the relative and the absolute. You need, you need the posit You know, have both because. Like non duality, it needs duality in order for it to, to be of, of value on its own. You're equally fucked. You just lost in a different, game. You know, but actually, no non duality and duality. Then there we are. Now, now you have the, the kind of the yin, yin and the yang of life. But also, I think the speakers, and I know this from experience, like, they have had their teacher, and, and I think they imitate their style and message. And people see that and think, oh, they're, they're all talking like that. And mm. so that must be right. And also, I think there's something about the fact that, you know, fewer words, it's more austere, almost that, like, seems more true. Like, the truth has to be stark and really fucking ugly, doesn't it? Like, I don't know, there can be an attraction to that, like, almost like a psychological attraction to that. Oh, well, there is no experience, it's like, um, you know, bliss stuff, you know. It seems more pure somehow. Oh, you're not making money out of it, therefore it must be true. Like, they must be trustworthy. And also because a lot of us have had tyrannical mothers or fathers and, you know, so therefore we're going to look for that in the speaker. We might see it as, we will see that strength probably. If we're repressed, whatever, we'll see oh, this person's really authentic because they're, you know, tough love. <laughs> I mean, but actually they're just a cunt. But, I mean, that's not always the case. Some people are just really strong and um, good speakers and, kind of, you know, but it's just funny what we're attracted to. It's all our psychology, isn't it? Like, um, you know. But yeah, there's no getting out of it. There's no, the message contaminates the only way to make this healthy is for people to stop talking about it, but I'm not going to do that. <laughs> so healthy, call it healthy narcissism, but it's like, it's the easiest thing to talk about, isn't it? It's like, you get up and you talk from your own experience. I mean, it's not like giving a lecture in fucking physics or something, is it, do you know? Mm -hmm. um, so, but then you're stuck, your life's on hold. And if you break away from the how certain people talk about it, then you know you can be invalidated. You can be, you know, well that's not right because you get a lot of people to write. But well, I, I don't, I don't get all the people to write. But when I do, you know, you can get you know criticism. Oh, non duality, you know, like people who write a big long email what the fuck? of like, this is what non duality is, or, or the advice of police is as commonly known as isn't it? And, you, you say, you talk about you being awake. Don, you talk about you being awake, and it's like, oh, fuck. <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> uh, um, I like your framing of the relative and the absolute. And, yeah, just, well, both, both of you, though. Sorry, no, your name, name. Oh, yeah, just Bob. Bob, nice to meet you. But yeah, but both of the way you you framed it, it seems to be this this healthy understanding that you know, regardless of the abstract and the absolute, there is still the realness of the relative. You know, like you said, you do have this life, and you there is an experience of duality that, that you mentioned, the yin and the yang. You know, there's there's something missed if you focus on this life, and there's something missed if you focus on the abs absolute. This non-dual experience without understanding that the two exist in tension with each other in some paradoxical way. Um, 
one, one cannot be spaced out and floating without being embodied. Also, like you mentioned, there's, there seems to be like a very clear path towards like self-emotional gaslighting. You know, there is real trauma that people experience, there is suffering, and to say that there is no I, there is no experiencer, seems to be like a very unhealthy kind of, you can just repress your trauma and, and not work through whatever psychological suffering that you experienced, the Dawn or the Bob or the David really experienced, even if there is an absolute where there is no Bob or David or Dawn. Oh yeah, and if there's no thought in the head, it's the trauma's in the body, so what does it care? It doesn't need the thought, it's going to, you know, there's going to be more cortisol in the, in the body, is you know, like, and you're going to be, those patterns are going to be lived out because they're not going to be recognised, not going to be reflected. I mean, that's a great thing about thinking, isn't it? We actually develop thinking, we can actually reflect on our experience and, and get in touch with those emotions that way as well, name them realize what the hell's going on work with the story work through the story the story is the unconscious you know it's so broken up isn't it it's, our memories are fragmented it's you know creating a coherent story out of that is is healthy that's a sign of health that the more coherent it is the more it tends to reflect the psychological integration of the individual as well yeah. so if you're not going there and you're not talking about that and you're not taking it seriously, I mean, how else do you bond with people anyway? You can't just sit and gaze at them all day <laughs> when you can't actually for a while. <laughs> My wife would that. get very annoyed very quickly if I just sat there and looked at her. She loved her for a little while. She loved her for a while. Yeah. I mean, we, we tend to bond over that, like our, I mean, our more intimate relationships and more we kind of share, don't we, the, our issues and of course that can be put in a real negative way as well, or you bond over, like, we bond over crap, but like as if there's something wrong with the problems, they're, I mean they're fascinating as well, and they, I think our issues and what life throws at us, there's a, they're quite curious too, and of course all the synchronicities that sometimes seem to congregate around certain periods of life where you're just like what where did that come from or where did that you know it, it can be fascinating from that perspective as well like mm -hmm. so but it's a you know there's stuff to unlock there and i love it because i love going into my own like just you just see something suddenly you know the lights go off and something and it's like wow and that will shift how you act i mean that will shift how you think and it's exciting. And it's always that, yeah, you know, it's just a story. I mean it's always it's always like a kind of put down anyway, isn't it? It's, no, it's, it's a story, it's just a story, it's to minimise. What else, how else do you relate? I mean, we, we are story, we're storytellers, aren't we? I mean, that's what we are, we're storytelling beings, we share stories, we, you know, that's what our lives consist of, we draw them to them, aren't we? We watch stories, we go to watch movies, you know, like, we, we're, I don't know, um, Yeah, and then there's the beingness. There's just there's that in the four. Okay, when you're awake, there's there's the energy of just that intimacy that's there, and in the foreground, like that's you know, and everything's taking place in that. Not that's in that, but so there's more of that sort of ease in that rather than I suppose when it's more mind based, there can be much more agitation going on in the background or absorption in the mind and you know distraction and stuff so um, and who knows what happens to the story maybe it's bottled somewhere when we die <laughs> bottled <laughs> stories it's, stories are about 
people share, share stories, what I think they're looking for is they're looking for a feeling of connection. If you're telling a story or if you're reading a story, or listening to a story, or you're watching a play or a film, and you feel a connection at a visceral level, which lets you know that you're alive. You have a feeling of aliveness because you have a, you have a really strong connection. Oh yeah. Um, it's not. It's not about. It's not just about entertainment. Oh no, I wasn't. I wasn't reducing it to that. Jesus, no. no. I didn't get that, but yeah. And uh, and validation and 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 being understood uh, and or or exhibiting empathy. Like there's so many yeah. things in it. But it's also you, not just stories, but connection to art or music <clears> or <throat> smell or taste or you know, you feel a connection. You feel an aliveness. Mm. Well, you might be enthusiasm almost, right? These are all just tools that we use to generate that feeling of enthusiasm with with the moment, with the experience, with the life. You know, yeah. So life. we come here and we listen to Don talk, and somebody feels a connection with something Don has said. There's a shared experience, and you can go, "Fuck, I, I'm not alone here. I'm not dead. I feel alive here." You know, there's a, a resonance. Yeah. And that's why, you know, I think that's why some story, some storytellers are really powerful. Some speakers are really powerful. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Well, I mean, yeah. There's all the negative side of that as well, of course. You know. Can be. Yeah. Yeah. And all of the above, and yeah. all at once. Yeah. Um. Yeah. Yeah. There are horror stories. <laughs> <laughs> When you say the negative side, what, what are you thinking? What, what are you referring to? Oh, just like stories could be used to confuse, to, right, right. to hurt, right. okay. to exert power. Oh, and the usual stuff, isn't it? Everything's... Cast spells. Cast spells. Cast spells, yeah. I'm not very good at casting spells, so you're right. But, um, But it can disappear completely as well, awakening. When, if the mind's not there, obviously there's no stories going on mentally, you know. But obviously the body is doing its thing and if the patterns are continuing, you'll still kind of... There'll be changes, but there'll be... I mean, there'll be changes, so you might change the people you hang out with, but they'll be superficial. They will seem like changes, but deep down they won't be changes. So I think you can con yourself into thinking your life's changed after this when actually it hasn't. It's just on a superficial level, it looks like it has, but it hasn't. Because, <clears throat> yeah, I mean, some of that stuff's really deep in the cells, isn't it? Like, you've been acting certain ways, the mind is gone, therefore there's just peace, but peace doesn't... You need recognition to know you're doing something, to stop doing something that's not good for you. You need to kind of know what that is, recognise it, I think. I don't think they just fall away like that. They could in some cases, but I can't see how. Defences can just fall away, evaporate for sure, because there's nothing to defend, unless you're narcissistic, in which case all there are defences, because there's nothing behind that. There was no person to begin with, in a real egoic sense. Um, that's a different kind of no one's here. <laughs> no. <laughs> um, and Did you mention you you are a practicing psychotherapist? Yeah. So in your in your work with with clients, you are. Whatever psychological growth you are trying to help them with, or bringing things up from the unconscious to their ego, or whatever you're trying to help them with, is there a conflict you see in in this psychological growth that one might have in a standard psychotherapeutic setting, and this kind of understanding that there is no there is no there is no person there? What 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 if one can get to that stage of realising there is no mind or there is no person there, 
what is the cycle? What is the? Is there a conflict between that and, and like a psychological growth, like an individuation process of of self development, or someone developing their, their selves psychologically? Not to me. There isn't. I wouldn't think in those terms. I mean, we talk about. I think Bob and I talked about this before. Like, um, you know, like in a in a story of suffering, where this is seen, there could be a sense of things being stripped away, like the ego being beaten <laughs> with a, you know like a hammer or something but it, I, um, in the third I mean I really can't for me it just seems like it's irrelevant that and, and if anything was were to have an effect at all it would be the connection between you and the client the love that's there the intimacies there I'm not saying that there's some sort of special process that goes on there but that's I mean, that's the sort of vessel, that kind of alchemical soup in which it all kind of takes place in a way. Like, so it's, um, uh, you know, but I, I think it's, it's so valuable and building it and strengthening that because if you don't do it before, you, you, I mean, it's good to do it at some stage before or after. It doesn't really matter. After, you may not give a rat. Like, you might further down the road. Um, but you may not immediately, so it's like, I mean, I don't see how it hinders, I can't see how anything hinders this, I really don't. In a way, then, there's part of me, I could say, in a moment, that if you get really, really sucked into superstitions around spirituality, too sucked into that, maybe. But I, I even that, nothing can stop it. I mean, people wake up in all scenarios, like, so... I might say something that seems true for a minute and then I'll just go, no, it's not the case. You know, it doesn't, meditation doesn't hinder, not ultimately, and neither does it further it. It may further insights, it may further glimpses, it may quieten the mind and make you healthier and change your life in so many different ways. But as far as we know, it doesn't lead to this. Um, so it doesn't affect how it, I would, be maybe I think I think it's really really like I think the story is more important than I ever did with a client like as in the keys the keys to where you are in that like a lot of them are certainly have been for me and and you know and and I I'm drawn to the writers and that that I can resonate with, I don't just read a book and like, oh right, that must be true. You know, like it's like, okay, that's, you know, obviously that's what we do, don't we? We meet a writer kind of halfway, don't we? That's, you know, you might change a few years down the line and think that was a load of crap, <laughs> like, but, you know, like where you are right now. But, uh, so yeah, like, because I can see exactly why I was repeating the patterns I was repeating. It's so obvious to me and it just seems so ridiculous. I think it is for a lot of clients when they kind of have those realizations they're just like, what the hell have I been doing, you know? Mm -hmm. And it's that horror of dealing with wasted time. Awake or not, okay, awake, you may not be chewing yourself up with regret every minute of the day. You may not, you're not awake either, like, but, but there, there is a sense of that. It's like lost time. I mean, you, 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 you can't do it, you know, you're never, there's certain things at a certain age you're never going to be able to do because you're living out those patterns, or in my case, like, I'd never be able to have kids or you know so many things I didn't do that I can't do now so there are consequences to living out these patterns you said that the right the other writers at the moment that resonate with you that you would recommend or is there a particular writer that you, you like his work or her work I like my Pete Walker's great on on the trauma stuff that's been a big influence of mine um from surviving to thriving, it's really powerful. Pete Walker's. Pete Walker, yeah, on a, I guess. But yeah, get bits and pieces here and there and Do you feel competitive? 
sometimes. So, um, was that something that was, you enjoyed? That no, I mean, com competitive. I mean, that's a natural thing as well. So, I mean, Rene Girard would say we, we find it easier to talk about sex than envy. Um, we are mimetic beings. We, we imitate each other, and when there's imitation, there's competition and there's envy. So, um, in his writing on that, he would say Christ was the only person free of that. Only he imitated God, because he was God. But anyway, I'm not going to go into theology, but, but like, but you, you won't get into you won't get into rivalry or competition with somebody if your idols are removed. So like, instead of interior. Um, external kind of so like if if they're fictional or they live in a different social milieu or whatever but um it's at the heart of all of us we're competitive beings we are and and some people say they, they won't be but but they're, they're not look closely <laughs> i think we're all quite you you know anybody can get caught up in that um you look at someone um they're happily bumbling along with their girlfriend that they're a bit bored with but they're okay and then suddenly someone fancies their girlfriends and suddenly <laughs> their desires reawakened and they're you know like and there's a compet you know that then they become competitive and you know kids are like that aren't they you know, playing with a toy, nobody gives a fuck about the toy, and one kind of like, wow, and then the other one wants to snatch it, and suddenly this object becomes valuable, that's actually not, it's just a stupid ball. Yeah, I mean, I, I, I was one of six kids, so there was a lot of competition from mum and dad in that environment. How was that for you? Quite competitive. <laughs> <laughs> right, okay. How did you do? How did you score? Fuck, that was... <laughs> You, you develop a technique, I develop a technique, because I have to be different to the rest of them. So my technique for getting mum and dad's love was to come home from school and we deal with a different joke. <laughs> so I, I, was, I was the joker. Okay. So that would, that would, get, me, that would get me love for three seconds. <laughs> that would be it. And the next day I might get another three seconds of love. All right, okay, wow. Well, that's a lot of jokes, though, isn't it? They're not very good jokes either. Oh no. I remember, I suppose it was a bit with my brother, but we were like best mates and he was a year and a half older. And we'd fight a lot, we'd be very competitive over our rabbits. We bred rabbits and get very competitive. But then we made a pact because we both fancied this, I fancied this guy Francis and he fancied this girl and they were brother and sister. And so we never, we decided we'd never fight again. We'd never tell mum and dad about like, so we, we just became best of mates. We had no competitiveness anymore. Just... What? Well, the rabbits? Mum gave them to the farmer. I <laughs> think <laughs> they all died. <laughs> they all went to rabbit heaven. <laughs> that was horrible. It's still very hot at 22 degrees, isn't it? It is, yeah. Okay, I'll turn it right down. there. 